I'm so thrilled to, to be here today. And you know, I always say the most important function of government is to keep people safe. And that first and foremost means supporting our military and supporting our veterans, supporting our law enforcement, and supporting the Second Amendment. And I'm, I'm just so thrilled to be here for all of you. I, am, I started uh, a coalition down where I live uh, called Rye Act. It's Rye Action for Children and Teens. Uh, and it's all about helping kids with substance abuse and mental health issues. So it's something that's really near and dear to my heart. And uh, there's a lot of things that we can do around this state to make things better for the entire state, but really to make things better for our veterans and our seniors and our law enforcement, because we need to take care of them. They've served us, that's why we have our freedoms, and we need to take care of all of you and the people that take care of you. So I'm, I'm so thrilled to be here today. It's really been, uh, I spent the uh, day over in uh, Bolivar at the Pioneer Oil Festival, and now I'm here, and I'm just thrilled you asked me to come. So thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for this honor of letting me uh, speak here today. I was just talking to your president about uh, being in the most secure place we could possibly be, and that is right here among all of you. It reminds me years ago, right after 9-11, Dick Cheney was told he had to stay in a very safe and secure environment, and he came out to speak at the Marine Corps Ball. And Vice President Cheney said, being in a room with a thousand Marines is about as safe as I can get. Likewise, I know I am in the safest community and the safest group of people. We hear about violence all across America. I guarantee you right now, if somebody was to pull out a gun and start shooting, he'd have 500 people right here on top of it. No doubt. I'd like to take a moment to tell a couple of uh, stories. One, as the reinforcements, I know you're associated with Roland Thunder. Years ago, I was at the Pentagon serving as the uh, Crisis Action Team Chief. I was working night shift and we had a funeral for a fallen soldier from Iraq or Afghanistan the next day. And the police chief knew that the Westboro Baptist Church was coming. And we were working with him, how do we handle this? That night, the police chief sent us a report. Unbeknownst to him, this group of motorcyclists called Roland Thunder came in and asked the chief, can we take care of this situation? And we will make sure the family is not harassed in any way, shape, or form. And the police chief realized they were all military veterans dedicated to the principles of duty, honor, country, and he said, I will gladly accept your support. The, the motorcycle trend, and I'll skip back a little bit, came out of the Flying Tigers and the, uh, the Air, Air Force pilots and the Army Air Corps pilots and Marine Corps and the Navy pilots that served in World War II. And in the middle of battle, American and Allied warriors were always greatly pleased to see the Air Force come to the rescue, or the Army Air Corps at the time, or the Navy of the, of the Marines. There used to be a saying, if it flies in the daytime, it's American. If it flies at night, it's British. If it doesn't fly at all, it's German. <laughs> well, in the tradition of the Air Corps, Roland Thunder came in right at the right moment and told the police chief, we'll rescue you from this problem, and they did. And they kept up that legacy time and time again, and it's a great honor to be among people associated with Roland Thunder and all that you do to recognize the great American veterans and make sure families are not taunted in a very, very critical time. This one is hard to get through. All of us remember Ann Margaret and the great work that she did with Bob Hope. Years later, she, was, she wrote a book and she went on tour for book signing. She came to this bookstore 
right when it opened up and the line stretched right outside the door all the way. All these people, especially veterans, wanted to come and get Ann Margaret to sign their book. This Vietnam veteran came up and he had in his hand a photo that he had taken with her years earlier and he showed it to her. The bookstore staff jumped in and said she is here only to sign books, she is not here for photographs, she's not here to, to talk about anything else. And Margaret comes flying out of her chair, gets into the face of the bookstore staff and tells him he is one of my gentlemen. You will never talk to him that way. If he wants an autograph, I will give it. If he wants a, if he wants a photograph, I will give it. And you will treat him with total respect. He is one of my gentlemen. The whole bookstore erupted into applause. That night, the veteran, sitting at home with his wife, was eating, and he started to cry. And his wife said, what is the matter? And he said, this is the first time somebody has thanked me for serving in Vietnam. With Ann Margaret, let's take a moment to thank those Vietnam veterans. It's long overdue. Often, all veterans, all combat warriors are asked, in the middle of the fight, what are we fighting for? Are we fighting for the flag? Are we fighting for the country? Are we fighting for the Constitution? And the reality is, of those three things in the middle of the fight, no, we're not fighting for those. We serve the nation, we defend the Constitution, we rally to the flag, and we fight for the one on the left and the one on the right, and ladies and gentlemen, together, all of us, we're in this fight together, and we're fighting for each other. Thank you. On behalf of VFW Post 212 in Bradford and the Kinsu Chapter A Beta PA, we'd like to give these guys this check for $1,500. And you know what? We had so many brave Americans from this region who have answered the call for their country, they've stood up and served, but we need to do everything that we can as a country and as a state to help our veterans, right? But I was able to secure a $350,000 grant in the New York State budget to start the Dwyer program in Cattaraugus County.